Well, the warning this weekend from Jacques Attali, the former president of the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, could not have been more stark. He said the real question is, will the euro still exist by Christmas? The world has never been through a collapse of a common currency as widely used as the euro. And uncertainty about that is one reason the price of gold keeps going up and why this past week Canadians bought up $600 million worth of it when the Royal Mint offered it for sale. When people get worried about the future of paper money, gold is considered a safe haven. Canadians haven't been the only ones buying up gold lately. After 20 years of selling their gold reserves, central banks around the world have abruptly reversed course, adding 150 metric tons of gold to their currency reserves in only three months. With the euro in crisis and the U.S. failing to come up with a debt reduction plan, central banks are buying gold as a hedge. Which country's central banks are doing it is a closely held secret. But we know the U.S. keeps a lot of its foreign reserves in gold. So does Germany. Other countries backstop their paper money with very little gold. Canada doesn't have a gold reserve anymore to back our dollar. We sold it a decade ago. Well, Eric Sprott has been named Canada's top financial visionary this year. He's respected worldwide for his opinions on gold and silver and investing. He's attending the 10th anniversary of the business school at Carleton University, which bears his name. Uh, Mr. Sprott, does the fact that Canada holds no gold reserves to back its currency anymore put it in any greater risk uh, with all the money that's being printed around the world right now? Well, I don't think anybody's gold reserves are adequate enough to solve the system. I mean, if I take all the gold reserves in the world, they probably represent... Um, maybe one-tenth of all the money in the world. So there's no way you can back the currencies with gold. Uh, it's unfortunate that Canada, uh, back in the early 2000s, sold all their gold. And um, I, of course, would not have recommended that. And I would recommend even today that the, uh, the government, the Treasury, or the Bank of Canada should own gold. Well, right now, our reserves are backed by the U.S. dollar, which is backed by gold. Uh, the Bank of Canada Governor Mark Carney this month insisted that paper money isn't going anywhere, but as you well know, the euro looks to be in uh, pretty serious jeopardy this weekend. Yes. So down the road, could our currency be in trouble without gold reserves? Well, uh, Kevin, I take a, a pretty broad view when it comes to gold, and you know, my own view is that the market has already made gold the reserve currency. The market has, not the central banks, not the governments. And... Um, uh, ultimately, I think these currencies are going to have to be backed by something tangible, which really means gold and silver. So the fact that we don't have any gold puts us in a, a, a weakened position. So um, I think it would be important for us to reestablish those reserves. Uh, a lot of people would have noticed that a lot of central banks are buying gold now. And the IMF just came out with, uh, sorry, the World Gold Council just came out with a study saying that you know, um, central banks bought something like 148 tons of gold in the third quarter, which is an unprecedented amount. And I'm sure that was spread amongst, uh, you know, five to ten different central banks. I would have loved our central bank to be one of them. But the fact it didn't, is there value in buying it up now? Well, I think it would have lots of value, um, but it's not going to have a, a, a significant proportion of value when you're going up against countries that already have, let's say, 10% uh, of their currency backed by gold, and we're starting at zero. So it would take a lot for us to get to even 10% back, and that'd be a huge commitment we'd have to make. At its current price? Years. Uh, years. <laughs> well, you've been saying for months now that Europe's banking system is worse off than anyone is willing to admit. And uh, as you know, this past week, five, maybe six big central banks, ours included, flushed the system with cheap credit and moved reserves among themselves. Uh, what did that tell you? about the health of Europe's banks right now. These central bank things don't come out for no reason. Uh, I mean, there's rumors floating around that some banks were ready to go, uh, European banks, and that's why this coordinated response took place. And I can fully imagine that that is what's happening. One of the things I do monitor is the amount of money that these European banks are borrowing from the ECB. And the last report a week, they borrowed something like $18 billion in a week. There's only one reason banks have to borrow from the ECB, and that's that's because money deposits are leaving, and they, they, they either can't sell an asset, which they probably can't, and therefore they have to go to the central bank to, um, to pay off the depositor. Mr. Sprott, thanks for joining us. Kevin, all the best. Thank you.